Earlier this week, Russian aircraft manufacturer UAC unveiled the nation's newest stealth fighter, dubbed the Checkmate. While information about this new fifth-generation platform has steadily made its way to the media in recent months, and some images even found their way onto the internet last week, we now have the most complete vision of what this bargain basement stealth jet really is. Now, before we dive further into this jet, first we really need to recognize that this is not an operational platform, nor is there any strong indication that a flying tech demonstrator even exists. In other words, capability, cost, and even the overall design of this new fighter are all liable to change before this jet ever makes its way into production, and that's assuming that it ever does. Russia's struggling economy and limited defense budget all but assure that the nation won't be able to fund continued development, let alone production, of the Checkmate single-handedly. So the future of this fighter program is really in the foreign market, and Russia is well aware of that. They invited delegations from 65 nations to come to this unveiling event for that specific purpose. According to this week's announcement, UAC believes they can start delivering new Checkmate fighters within just five and a half years, with their first fighter for testing slated to be complete by 2023. It would do us all some good to remember that this is a fighter that's being actively marketed. In other words, exaggeration and extreme optimism are very likely in play when it comes to its announced capabilities. But it's equally important for us to remember that Russia has a long and illustrious history of making grandiose claims about new military technology, only for it to fail to live up to expectations or even ever manifest at all. So it's with a baseball-sized grain of salt that we can dive into what the UAC says their new fighter can do, and why that matters for the future of Russia's ongoing staring contest with the West. Maybe the most important takeaway from this week's announcement is that the Checkmate promises to be the cheapest stealth fighter in the world by a wide margin, with a sticker price set at under $30 million per airframe. Now, obviously, $30 million isn't something to scoff at, but when compared to America's two stealth fighters, the F-35 and F-22, that's an absolute steal. The F-22 was the world's first operational stealth fighter, and it was canceled just 183 aircraft in to a 750 aircraft order. That massive cut in volume helped skyrocket the Raptor's price to over $200 million per aircraft. The F-35 Joint Strike Fighter has consistently lowered its per-unit cost over the years, and now rings in at just under $80 million per airframe. But both Lockheed Martin and the Pentagon have been accused of fudging those numbers by the nonpartisan project and government oversight. In their analysis of F-35 costs, an F-35A actually rings in at around $110 million, with the carrier-capable C at $117 million, and the short takeoff vertical landing F-35B costing $136 million apiece. It's not nearly as easy to ascertain the costs for China's Chengdu J-20 or for Russia's existing stealth platform, the Su-57, but experts have weighed in on both. According to the China Power Project, which was established by the Center for Strategic and International Studies, the per-fighter cost of the J-20 could be as high as $120 million, with the Su-57 likely closer to $100 million. If these numbers are even broadly accurate, that means the Checkmate would cost less than a third of its least expensive competitor, making it a really viable low-observable option for nations that just can't drop a nine-digit check on a single piece of equipment. The next most important claim has to be that the Checkmate is supposed to use AI to support pilot operations. Now, an ongoing concern for fighter pilots in a high-end fight has long been managing mental load. Traditionally, a fighter pilot has to keep track of multiple gauges and sensor readouts, as well as the terrain, friendly nearby aircraft, the target, and any potential threats in the area. Until not all that long ago, pilots had to combine all of this information in their heads. But flying supercomputers like the F-35 streamline this process for pilots to let them free up their focus for the task at hand. Not only did UAC claim that the Checkmate fighter would leverage onboard supercomputers, but they even went a step further and claimed the aircraft would use artificial intelligence, or AI, to further reduce the mental strain on its pilots. 
This idea isn't unheard of. In fact, it was the basis behind the US Air Force and DARPA's Alpha Dog flight trials held last year. The event pitted real human fighter pilots against AI in virtual dogfights, but the stated aim had always been to improve the AI while increasing pilot comfort with the idea of it. Eventually, the plan is to use this AI in the cockpit as a co-pilot of sorts, handling monotonous tasks for the pilot, or even responding to things like inbound missiles faster than humans are capable of doing. However, to date, AI hasn't found a place in any fighter cockpit, and it seems pretty unlikely that Russia will master the craft by 2023, which is when they claim the first checkmate will take to the skies. It is, however, pretty likely that the checkmate fighter will leverage its onboard computers alongside some degree of sensor fusion to provide an enhanced awareness of the battlefield, like most other fighters of its generation. And it's going to need that awareness of the battle space, because the next important takeaway is that the checkmate won't be able to keep up with other 5th gen jets in a dogfight. Of course, all the cost savings had to come from somewhere, and even with the assumption that claims about the checkmate may be exaggerated for marketing purposes right now, its claimed capabilities still fall short of other jets in its class. Every other 5th generation fighter on the planet has a claimed structural limit that exceeds 9 Gs. The checkmate, however, claims only 8. Now, G-forces are measured in relation to the natural weight of gravity on Earth, so 1 G is what you experience all the time, and 9 Gs is literally 9 times that. We've actually got a great breakdown on G-forces and what they mean for fighter pilots on Sandbox News, penned by F-35 pilot Hazard Lee. I'll leave a link to that article down below, but suffice to say that the F-35, F-22, Su-57, and J-20 all claim to be able to push more than 9 Gs while turning, and it's clear that the Checkmate won't be able to match that. In fact, it won't even be able to match 4th generation fighters like the F-16 or F-15. But there's good news for the Checkmate too, including its claimed range of around 1,800 miles, or 3,000 kilometers. The single-engine Checkmate weighs in at significantly less than the twin-engine Su-57, and that, in conjunction with its stealthy but high-lift delta-wing design, seems to give it pretty good range. And if that range holds true into production, it would give it a pretty big advantage over jets like America's F-35, the furthest reaching of which is the carrier-capable F-35C, which maxes out at just shy of 1,400 miles in the best of conditions. The F-22 Raptor can beat out the Checkmate's proposed range, but just barely, and with the addition of stealth-killing external fuel tanks. Now, Russia already claims their Su-57 has a combat radius of around 930 miles, which is significant. I mean, that suggests a total range of 1,860 miles with a combat load. It seems like the Checkmate is similarly aiming to play into long-distance operations. Its claimed service ceiling of better than 50,000 feet is pretty much on par with other aircraft in its generation, many of which claim operational ceilings of better than 50,000 feet without any further specifics. The next really important takeaway is all about weaponry, as the Checkmate promises to deliver on yet another buzzword and carry hypersonic weapons internally. According to this week's announcement, the Checkmate fighter will be able to carry three RVVBD long-range air-to-air missiles internally without compromising its stealth profile. Now, this missile is also known as the R-37M or by NATO as the AA-13 Arrow, both of which are much easier to say than RVVBD. It's a hypersonic weapon that was originally designed to take out tankers, AWACS, and other command and control aircraft from beyond the range of their fighter escorts, and its max range is said to be around 124 miles. With a claimed maximum speed in excess of Mach 6, this missile is believed to leverage an active data link for guidance supported by the fighter's onboard computers before switching to active radar homing and the final leg of its flight path. Like the Checkmate itself, this weapon was purpose-built for the export market, and it was designed to be easily mated to Russia's export iterations of both Su and MiG-style fighters. It seems logical, then, that the Checkmate would be designed to leverage these very weapons, as both stealth fighters and hypersonic missiles are currently considered extremely valuable for national militaries, and both are really good ways to secure a headline. However, storing three of these weapons internally is a pretty tall order, 
At around 13 feet 9 inches long, the RV VBD isn't that much longer than a normal air-to-air -air weapon, but its 15-inch diameter is more than twice that of air-to-air -air weapons like the AIM-120, which is carried internally by the F-22, and that's three times the diameter of smaller short-range weapons like America's advanced AIM-9X. That added girth means a lot of added weight too. Depending on the source, the RV VBD weighs in at between 1,100 and more than 1,300 pounds, meaning a single one of these missiles weighs as much as six AIM-9Xs, or almost four AIM-120s. Now, the most modern iteration of the AIM-120, which is the 120D, has a reported range of at least 87 miles, with an actual maximum range that's never been disclosed, so it's hard to say how much of an advantage the RV VBD really offers in terms of distance. However, the AIM-120 tops out at around Mach 4, which is well below the hypersonic limit at Mach 5, let alone the RV VBD's claimed top speed of better than Mach 6. There is sure to be more revealed about this fighter in the months and years to come, but right now, it's really just a paper plane, and it doesn't mean much for Russia's military. Russia has struggled for nearly a decade to find a way to fund production of their Su-57, and today they have a standing order placed for 76 of them. However, funding for that production run still hasn't been established, aside from an initial influx of funds. In other words, Russia's newest stealth fighter is really no stealth fighter at all, at least until they can line up some foreign buyers. And with that ends yet another edition of Sandbox News. I'm Alex Hollings. Make sure you swing by sandboxnews.com today and every day for all the latest in news, entertainment, and motivation from all around the force. If you got anything out of today's video, make sure to click like and subscribe down below and leave me a comment. I have a blast going through and reading them all. And of course, don't forget to tap on that bell icon so you never miss a drop from Sandbox News.